And then the main event, Orange Cassidy, John Moxie for the international title. This match was awesome. Orange comes out and puts his hands in his pockets. And, brother, that was a big mistake. Moxie just clobbered him, and he beat the holy hell out of this dude. And uh, Orange would make comebacks. He'd get killed. He'd make comebacks. He'd get killed. Remember that match with um, Tanahashi to Shii where they wrestled each other's match? Well, mm-hmm. they didn't really do that here. But one man bled in this match, and it was not John Moxley. Yeah. Orange gets busted open. This dude's just bleeding everywhere. And, you know, they finally build to his big comeback. And as is the case in every Orange Cassidy match, I mean, he's hitting a punch, he's hitting a cutter, he's hitting everything. He hit a spear that the people thought might be the finish in the main event of a pay-per-view on John Moxley because he's beaten everybody, and he's used a million different finishes. And, man, he hit that spear, and that place went nuts. And Moxley kicked out, and then Orange puts the hands in his pockets. He does the weak kicks, but then he builds up to hard kicks. And then Moxley hits a Larry, but he jumps up. He eats two more Larry. It's in a Death Rider. Gets his shoulder up. The place is going crazy. And then finally Orange stands up, and he just gives him the old double bird. And Moxley, it's like he just looks at this guy, and he can't even bring himself to boot him first. He just walks over. He grabs him. He lifts him up. He dumps him right on his head with the Death Rider. And he pins him after all this time. And he wins the international title. And then he does the old Terry Funk. He's stumbling around ringside. He can hardly stand. He's got the rubber legs. BCC has to help this guy stand up and hold his belt and start carrying him to the back. And he's just looking down there incredulously at this Orange cast. He can't believe how tough this guy is. And then Orange wakes up and show ends with... Them giving him a standing ovation. Thank you, Orange Chance. Freshly squeezed Chance. And, uh, you know, he lost, which is a downer for the fans. But he got to stand there at the end, and they got to cheer him and give him his moment, and they appreciated the whole thing. And it didn't it didn't feel like a sad ending to the pay-per-view. It felt like you knew the day was coming. You saw history. It it's- went to a guy who's a big star. And you got to give Orange his moment. So yeah. I thought it was a great ending of the show. I thought I thought Moxley, you know, it was time to change the title. And Moxley's a guy. The title means so much more than it did when Orange Cassidy won it. And um, with Moxley. Because of it, Orange Cassidy. Because of Orange Cassidy. And it's going to mean even more with Moxley, you know, defending it against different guys. Uh, as long as they're the right guys. I mean, you know, if he just wrestles... You know, guys that he can beat in five minutes, it wouldn't be that great. But I don't think that's what the, the what they'll do. But the other thing that's good about this title is, is they've really established it as something that, like, you know, you can put on television every other week. And, you know, because the main title is still the one that Max has. Um, so, um, yeah, I thought, you know, it was good. The thing also is that they have to, I think, and this is a tricky one for them, but they have to do something to keep Orange Cassidy in... Um, in a key position because it really would be a shame because sometimes you have these things where a guy has a great run and then he like loses one match and then you kind of like well oh they should almost never beat this guy he well, should so be much, beaten only on very it's, it's rare not, occasions it's, it's, not, a, it's not about it's a, with orange it's not about winning and losing he can lose he can lose it like, well of course he, he can but he should not be out there losing all the time oh no of course not no no but no i'm saying he should be in a key program though i mean he should be whether it's going after max or or something, or being in a big grudge program, but he needs to be in a key television program with a top guy. I mean, he needs to be working with top guys pretty much all the time, you know, and, and you know, whoever they may be, because um, he's a top guy now, and, and being, you know, it was good for him. He got to main event a pay-per-view and all that. Well, how was the uh, press conference this time around? Um, I don't know. I wasn't there, but, uh, I mean, there's a couple of news i mean there's no uh no big stuff uh tony wouldn't talk about punk wouldn't answer any questions on that subject um christian cage said he signed a new deal and um which i guess is the only real news tony said that the uh the the gate was eight hundred thousand, which is less than the million that he predicted last week so i guess that's disappointing but it's okay you know i mean um then, you know, it's funny because, again, like, you know, London was such a success, but the, this U.S. business is soft. I mean, it just is. And um, not that $800,000 is a bad gate, but, again, in Chicago for, for this pay-per-view, 
uh, you, you'd have expected over a million. And, uh, you know, so there, there was that. The pay-per-view, Tony said. So, so at this point, at this point, there, there's enough in where from streaming. I mean, he, he'll have all the streaming numbers during the show. In fact, he got it in the middle of the show, the streaming numbers. And at that point, he felt that the show will do over 100,000 buys. The thing is, is the real TV pay-per-view numbers, you're not going to get like a good count of that. I would say Wednesday, Thursday is usually when we get a good count. And even then, you know, it's like it grows greatly or not greatly in the next couple of weeks because, we, you know, um, I mean, we still don't really have the full handle on how um, last week's show all ended. But um, if this, I will say this, if this does over 100, which is what he is based on the digital numbers um, that they have as of during the show, it's it's at the level of a show that would do over 100. I think that that's a pre, even though, again, that would be the lowest in a long time. But you're talking about coming back a week after a giant number, you know, after a big show, you know, cause the one the week before. I mean, I'm going to, you know, it's going to be 170, 180 um, in that range somewhere. I mean, this one coming back and doing 100. With this card, I consider that a pretty big success. You know, I mean, it's not, you know, like I said, it's it's way well down. I mean, almost all the shows have done 140, but I didn't expect this to have a chance to do 140, and I don't think they did either. They were looking at the idea of, you know, two shows, and uh, if the second show can do 100, um, that's a great argument for them to run more pay-per-views because a lot of people, I mean, again, I think most people thought it was going to do well under that. And and again, it is possible that it does. You know, I mean, like I said, like, you know, the streaming, you know, he does have streaming numbers. He does have enough to have kind of a good feeling of where it would go. So it feels like it, it did well, but uh, we'll have a better idea like later in the week. Danielson also said that he was cleared by AEW's medical staff and an outside surgeon. And mm. that uh, he said there was a lot of smoke and mirrors in the match. That he never threw a strike with his right arm. No, he never did. He didn't do a lot with his right arm. He just whipped the hell out of people. Well, I mean, isn't that throwing a strike when you hold on to a thing and whip someone violently with it? Because he well, sure no. whipped him violently with that strap. Let it's me tell very, you something. It's very different from, from, from throwing a punch or a chop. And he did a lot of kicks. He did do a lot of kicks. He said C.J. Perry had not signed a long-term deal, but did not rule out the possibility of her signing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Jack Perry. Still suspended. Suspended indefinitely, he yeah. said. Yeah. So we don't know what that means or... Uh... Yeah, so on A, on a Steel, um, this, which you didn't address, but, I mean, A Steel is in the same position that he was in three days ago. Um, I mean, there's nothing for sure, for sure. Obviously, he, he could be let go um, because, you know, but he hasn't done anything wrong, number one. And there's no movement. Like, like there's a lot of people who wanted Punk gone, obviously. I mean, a lot. I mean, not everyone, but a lot. Um, as best I can tell at this point, and this is the whole key to the whole freaking thing. And it's the, it's the sad part of the whole thing is that, you know, as best I can tell, nobody nobody's adamant that Ace, Ace is gone. They weren't happy when he was hired, but now it's kind of like he's there. He's working remote. He didn't do anything wrong. There's no, I've heard no movement of anyone like, okay, now that Punk's gone, let's get rid of Ace at all from anybody. So um, my gut is, is that he'll be there and he'll be working the same job that he's working and there's no reason for him not to. Um, but... You know, like, uh, time will tell. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, 
Well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.